Hi, welcome to a hopefully short teardown of this uh, Sony E-mount lens here. This is from my Nex uh, 5T camera. I've been having uh, issues with it. Um, as you can probably see in there, it's got a little bit of uh, sand and crud and all sorts of stuff. I've been actually getting an error message on the uh, screen when it uh, boots up saying it can't actually talk to the lens and uh, of course through the uh, Sony E-mount um, system here and uh, but I don't think that's the problem because it feels trust me this is not feel a vision but that feels pretty crusty I think it's uh, been to the beach one too many times and been to one too many canyons and other things and it's just yeah I think it's stuck um, and that's what's causing the error message so I thought we'd actually yeah uh, tear apart one of these things and uh, have a look inside. I don't think I might, would bother, like I'd probably maybe clean it out and lube it up perhaps and put it back into condition, but these things are, are reasonably cheap and um, so yeah, I'm not sure if I'd, uh, I'd bother. It's not a spectacular lens by the way, but it is very, like in terms of uh, uh, performance, but it is very compact and when you mount it on the Sony Nex 5T camera uh, it you know it really is a nice little uh, package and I've shot quite a few uh, field videos using that uh, camera you've uh, seen on the blog using this uh, lens so it really is uh, quite a jazzy little thing so yeah it's got a um, it's got power and uh, comms of course to uh, talk to the camera and it's multi-element and all that sort of jazz but I've never taken apart a lens before so I thought it uh, might be interesting I know you lens aficionados out there know exactly what's inside these things but I have never taken one apart so there's four screws and well I'm gonna give it a go not sure how easy it does uh, extend out of course and that's the thing that gets jammed so I believe it actually gets jammed up because there's sand and all sorts of crud in there and uh, and then it throws up an error message it says it can't talk to the lens rather than you know lens jam or something but I have been able to like pull it back out manually uh, while the power's on and it you know and get it to work occasionally but yeah I've had now one too many times where I've taken this somewhere and it just simply refuses to work so Yes, it's, I've lost all trust in it. But anyway, let's take it apart. And the lens we're looking at is the Cell P1650. It's like the kit uh, lens which comes with a lot of uh, Nex uh, 5T and other uh, model cameras with the E-mount. So I'm not exactly sure what the uh, pinout and interface is here. I haven't looked, but I might have a quick Google on that before when I edit this thing and I'll... Uh, put it up but uh, some sort of you know maybe I squared C serial interface or something it's just got a you know it doesn't have to transfer a lot of uh, data so just be some interface like that or maybe a spy bus or something perhaps but I'm not sure how easily these come apart or how they rep or how repairable they are I guess you know you wouldn't bother repairing this lens you can get these pretty cheap but uh, you know more expensive lenses you can get them uh, serviced and that sort of jazz I believe so it's ton oh we're in like Flynn, we're in like Flynn. Look at that! Oh, straight in beauty. So let's take a look at some stuff here. We've got a flat flex for the E-mount uh, uh, pogo pins in there. Well, no, they're not uh, pogo pins. They're yeah pogo pins on the camera, but uh, little contacts on there. So that's going flat flex going over to the board here. We've got a large flat flex, large pin count flat flex headed off here. So I'm not sure what that's. Uh, uh, well, that's obviously going to all the other um, uh, sensors and uh, may, uh, are there any further motors in there or is uh, there only the one motor on the top here? Anyway, let's have a look. Um, I don't know what that puppy is offhand. I'll have to look that up. Could be some sort of custom job. This thing is interesting. This little ceramic package here, I'm not sure what that's doing. Uh, it's not, you know, I first thought, oh, it's an oscillator, but no, no, there's our oscillator down in there, but that's interesting. Let's take a look at the oscillator. Okay, can someone please explain to me why we need a 54 megahertz oscillator in here? It's a bloody lens. What does it have to do? It just controls the elements, and it, it's slow as a wet week at that. So, what the? 54 meg? Jeez. And I Google that uh, number on the top and I get a Renesis part. So, yeah, Renesis Micro, something like that. Um, you know, renumbered, something peculiar. Um, made in Japan, of course. Renesis uh, stuff is made in Japan, so that makes sense. So, yeah, some sort of uh, probably Joe Blog's Renesis Micro.
You can see some more screws around here. So I think this is going to actually come out uh, in several modules. It uh, should come out quite nicely. But anyway, here's the first of our motor here, which looks like it maybe drives this cog around here. Of course, the whole thing, as I said, the whole thing extends out. So there's going to be some sort of like a worm, uh, you know, S uh, small count uh, worm drive on the inner mechanism in there, which, uh, for want of a better term, I don't know my lens terminology and things like that, so you'll have to please forgive me, but um, yeah, anyway, I, uh, there's probably another, is there another motor in there somewhere, perhaps? Anyway, we'll find out. And you can clearly see the pinout on here. These two thick traces here, obviously the power, I don't know, what is it, 5 volts or 3.3 .3 or something like that, uh, going over, and then the rest are just uh, signal-wise. I've got the board out. There's another chippy on that side. We'll have a squiz at that. And uh, we can see the flat flex here, that uh, big multi-trace one. Look at that. I don't know. Count the number of traces on that puppy in HD if you want. And that just uh, that folds back under like that really is quite complicated. They've gone to a lot of effort, so it might be going, they might be splitting that off into multiple lengths and levels, going down into different uh, parts, and different sensors down in different parts of the lens. Uh, the lens. F52108, I have no idea what that puppy is. Maybe another uh, micro, perhaps. Why they need two? I'm a bit uh, surprised to find two large BGA devices in here. Anyway, that one's running at a much more sensible 12 megahertz, but still, geez, what does this thing have to do? And there's that motor assembly. It's got a cog on the bottom of there, so some sort of reduction drive gear in there, and then that obviously goes down into there, and that drives our ring. And just as I was wondering how this all comes out, it sort of slid out on its own like that. You can see these guides in there, like that. There's one there, there's one down there, and there's one down there as well, and but it doesn't pop out any further than that. That's it. So, not sure what the go is. Oh. Okay, what I'm going to do is probe its ass. Here we go. Um, this little motor in here, I'm, I've just put in a, two screws back in there just to hold that uh, the whole thing from sliding in place. And I'm just going to, because the board's out, we can apply voltage to the motor. I have no idea about the polarity. I have no idea what it's going to do. I presume it's going to try and move the whole thing um, out, extend the lens. So let's give it a go. Um, I'm assuming like three volts is going to be like one of a low voltage motor. So I've got, yeah, I've got about three volts set on the supply. So let's give it a burl and uh, see what she does. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, look. Hey, whoa! Hoo -hoo! Yay! Let's go back. There we go. Wow! Terrific! Now you saw there how it was like a multi-step uh, thing. You know, this starts extending out, then the other, then the inner one comes back and it all. That's how they get the real compact, uh, the compact lens configuration like this. Oh, there we go. It's super quick. Okay, I haven't put all the uh, screws back in. I think it's a bit loosey-goosey. But you can see how it uh, certainly extends that whole lot. It's really interesting. Because I didn't... This outer part here, I didn't actually see any uh, worm drive in the outer plastic. This part here. I mean, obviously there's nothing in here, because otherwise you'd be able to see it. So it's obviously doing that from the inside, some sort of inner ring in there, which is uh, doing the business that pulls that one in and out, because there's nothing on the surface of this, and there's nothing on the inner surface of this one here to actually drive this, so it must be coming from this center part, uh, the center uh, part down in the lens here. And yep, I can really see it and feel it here now when I try and move this back into place like this, to line up these screw holes here, pull that out, and that just spins around like that. So, wow, fascinating. Imagine designing this thing. Absolutely incredible amount of engineering has gone into 
making these sort of, um, well, they're not pancake lenses, but very narrow, uh, compact lenses like that. I'm sure it's order of magnitude more difficult to make these that sort of fold in on themselves rather than just, you know, your more traditional uh, lens, which just goes from one uh, stop to the, you know, one end stop to the next. I think now it's getting to the point where if you don't know the exact disassembly um, procedure for this or assembly procedure, which you could reverse, then uh, you could come a gutter here real easy. It's getting, it's getting quite tricky real fast. Anyway, I don't consider this I'm not, you know, fussed if I actually uh, can't get this uh, back together. So, yep, it's a, it might be a sacrificial teardown. And yeah, I'd recommend you don't go playing around with that motor because I've had to put it back in the fully uh, retracted position, that internal barrel there, before I uh, uh, now take the screws back out and drop it back out and figure out how to separate the two. So from what I can see, as I said before, there's three of these uh, guides down here and there seems to be little clips or you know like um, sort of pins or something holding those in so I've got to somehow get those out and it maybe you just like lift get under here and lift or something like that perhaps let me try that oh yeah there you go I got one of them out yep there we go I think that's the trick you just have to get them out Maybe, maybe not one at a time, maybe all three at once. I need multiple hands. Ta-da! That's easy once you know how. <laughs> and you missed it, but I, I just operated the motor and, uh, oops, it's come apart. But that's obviously how it does it. See, there you go. There's the internal, as I suspected, there'd be something like, not a worm drive, but there's actually a complicated arrangement, and that actually uh, is what does the multiple... Uh, you know, zoom in and compact in of the lens. So that's really quite fascinating. But yeah, um, the motor went really quick and it just accelerated and went pop and uh, came off. Oh, now, yep, it's coming off in multiple parts now. Got multiple stages here. Very, very interesting. As you saw, there's nothing on the inside of that barrel. It's just, you know, really an outer retaining clip, which just holds the back here. And this is the this is the whole part which extends out. Okay, so we have, there we go, there's the uh, the front lens, so it's just a fixed, it's just a fixed lens, doesn't do anything at all, looks like a fair bit of glass in there, actually it looks pretty thick. Um, it's, it's hard to see on the camera, it's hard to get a feel for it unless you've got, uh, unless you're looking at it in 3D like I am, but yeah, that's a thick bit of glass, and then this is behind it, so here's the next part. You can see a little motor in there, so it drives that inner, whoop, there's the inner, whoy, there's the inner part, we're really coming apart now, there we go, look at that, and this is, as we saw before, as I suspected, it looks like this is the one piece of flat flex, which then, that's why they had so many connections on it, because it went to multiple levels of the lens as I expected, see, so it, it went goes through there, and then pops out the other side here. So this is why this one had so many connections on it, count them, is because they snake their way off. And this is why this one has to be bent, of course, because it's compliant. So when the lens zooms, uh, lens zooms in and out. And so it's got to break off to motor down in here. So there's motor at the top, which drives the whole lot. Looks like there's a second one. Is there? Down in there? Is there a second one down in there? Yep. Oh, there's a second something down in there. There's definitely a uh, third, looks like a third motor over on that side there. So, wow. Complicated beast. Unbelievable. Multi-stage mechanism. How do you design this? Wow. Hats off to the designers. Really, that is awesome. Actually, I wasn't 100% correct on the uh, flat flex going all the way with LBJ there. It's, uh, you can see that this rotate, this inner barrel here rotates, right? So that one rotates a little bit, but you can see there's another flat flex connector down in there. So that, so the one that comes from the top board actually comes down here and just terminates to another board down in here. I guess that makes sense because this is 
going to be a whole uh, assembly, um, you know, it's going to be a whole manufacturing uh, step just for this uh, first or second lens assembly here. So, but that can obviously travel back and forth in there. And I had completely forgotten that this lens actually has image stabilization. So, of course, here we go. Look, here it is. We can see this mount in here. This is the Sony uh, Steady Shot. And this is what this um, uh, flat flex goes over here for. So, there's no, uh, what, the, the, the tiny little vi uh, motors there and there which drive the XY plane on that lens there. There we go like at, at high frequencies. So that's that's what all the processing is doing. That's why they need all the grunty processor, of course. I didn't uh, uh, realize they're doing that in the lens. They're not doing that in the, um, uh, the main processor in the camera. That image stabilization must be happening in the lens, the, uh, you know, the actual processing of it and the correction. This is all high frequency. This, you know, these things operate at kilohertz or something like that. They're, you know, they're really quite, uh, quite high frequency in terms of, you know, being able to eh, position this lens. So, you know, at least hundreds of hertz. And I'd love to be able to demo that, but uh, yeah, like hooking all into there and, you know, you'd really actually have to um, you know, power the entire lens up really um, in its, you know, disassembled state like this and, and plug it into the, you know, the front of the camera and everything else and actually have it uh, and have it actually control that because I don't think it's enough just to apply power to the thing. Anyway, that's fun. Look at that. Okay, so now we can see the lens system in order. We have our front lens here, which is just a fixed, thick bit of glass. And then that goes into another fixed one here. And then on the back of that, we have the Sony uh, Steady Shot lens that actually corrects for uh, uh, stabilization. And then up under here, the output of that, you can see it fall away. Hang on, if, yep. I can't push it back, but hang on, I'll let it fall under gravity, and you can see that it's all the way out here. There you go. It's all the way out, and watch it drop in. Watch it drop in, watch it drop. There we go, it drops in. And there is the, there is the magnet in there that it slides along. And then finally, on the back side of that, is the final fixed lens, and that's the last one, and that's the one that focuses on the uh, APS-C size uh, sensor inside the camera. So that there is a real interesting slider arrangement. Look at that. That really is quite neat, like a linear uh, slider. So that that is not a motor as such. They're going to position that uh, based on that permanent magnet right in there. And there it is, you can see it. There's the magnet down in there. That's obviously the drive, and it looks like they have some sort of positional sensor feedback in there to know exactly where it is. That's interesting. Now, I was a little bit medieval before driving that uh, main lens zoom motor, just, you know, whacking it up to the 3.3 uh, volts power supply. That was a bit rude. So I've now got a uh, one hertz uh, sine wave coming from my function gen, and I'm going to uh, probe the motor on this thing, see if it does anything. Let's have a go. Once again, I have no idea what this is going to do. Hang on, I'm presuming it's the motor. So let's give it a burl. All right, here we go. I've got it set to two hertz. Let's give this a go. Sorry, it's tricky to get these bloody probes on here. There we go. That's uh, two volts RMS at uh, two hertz sine wave. And you can see it just oscillating there. Nice. There you go. You can really see the coil in there on top of this fixed permanent magnet. So you can see that the coil can go woohoo. Look at that. That's fun. So yeah, they've obviously got coil inside there like that. Multi turns, you know, what is it? They're like, I don't know, 20, 30 turns on there or something. And uh, that is good enough to actually position this thing across there. Oh, and I forgot to show you, in addition to the uh, zoom guide mechanism out here, you can see how it 
sort of, you know, the pin in that can go in there and then ride that slot so you can see how it can go back and then forward and then back again have that particular pattern. Well, there's also one on the inside here as well just to allow yep there we go it just rotates that there's a little on the inner side right in there in the ring there's a little uh, uh similar sort of but not as complex guide as that one you should be able to see that snaking its way around in there and that has a guide pin on it on the top there so that goes into there like hang on where does it go into? It goes in, does it go into that slot? Yeah, it goes into that slot and then rotates in like that. Beautiful. And here it is all assembled back on the camera. Well, kinda. Um, I've attached, I had to screw the ring back in there so I could get um, some rotational force to actually lock it into the metal uh, clamping uh, ring, uh, the E-mount ring around the outside there. And I'm going to foolishly power it up. Unfortunately, uh, like the control here on the outer ring is not hooked up. So I'm hoping, so that's the encoder for there plus that ring. I'm hoping that that's not needed and it will actually um, do something when it powers up. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, will we see the lens, um, uh, the optical steady shot thing work? Will we see this come in and out? I don't know. Let's power it up. All right, here we go. Let's get in here and... Here we go. Will it do anything? Yep. There we go. Hey, it's rotating. Oh. <laughs> That's great. And it's more difficult to move that lens now. It's more di I probably shouldn't uh, because I'd be probably back feeding the, uh, the motor drive, but that is really quite... That's really quite stiff now. So... You know, I can still move it, but it's not loosey-goosey like it was before. It's definitely energized up. You can see that there's actually no error there. So that's it's really quite good. Of course, there's nothing coming through the, uh, through the lens unless I stick my finger in there and block out some light. But uh, I don't want to <laughs> stick my finger right in and uh, touch the sensor, of course. That would be really, really bad. But uh, let's... You can see the, oh, the iris in there as well. Sorry, I missed that. There's our iris uh, motor. There it is. So that's driving the iris inside there. Let's see if we can get a close-up of the iris. Okay, you can see the iris changing there. Maybe if I stick my finger in front. I don't know where it's doing the uh, metering for that, but let's power it. Let's uh, maybe take a photo. There we go. There we go. I push the shutter button down. And you can see the iris blade moving in there. There we go. Just took a photo. Try and show you that iris up close. There we go. Press the shutter button. Comes in a little bit. Let me block out some more, or allow some more light in, sorry. There we go. I'm tilting, what I'm doing is tilting the camera up to the lights here. So it's getting more light coming in. And you can really see that. How many blades is that iris? But there you go. And I tilt the camera back down. Or put my hand in front of it. Cover it a bit. And there you go. Iris goes wider. And watch this. I can actually show you the steady shot system working. What I'm doing now is I'm actually uh, recording a video. Okay, so it's live. It doesn't work if I don't record a video. So, of course, as I, as I showed, the sensor is actually on the top board here, I believe. So let's actually watch this mechanism down here. If I shake it like that, it does nothing, okay, because there's no accelerometer in there. But, oh, look, I just have to start wobbling the camera, wobbling the camera a little bit, and, and look, I'll actually pick it up and start shaking it around. And there you go, you can see the steady shot. <laughs> That's great. You can see it. It wobble. Here you go. I'll get closer. Wow. And that's not vibration coming through the desk or anything like that. I've got it off the desk. That is, that is the drives doing that. And I move it slowly around. That's the steady shot system at work. Good stuff. Look, you can see the, you can see the travel on these little guides, guides in here. Look at that. There we go. Wow. <laughs> That's great.
I can play with this all day. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that teardown of this Sony lens, and it really is quite amazing engineering that goes into these things. I, wow, you know, my hat's off to the designers of this thing. I'd love to know the design team uh, behind just a lens like this because you've got to have the optical people figuring out, you know, the uh, the irises and the lenses, you know, you've got to have the lens people, you've got to have the people who are figuring out the, uh, you know, the correct focal lengths and all the, you know, just grinding the glass and getting all that right is an art in itself, let alone uh, getting all the zoom drive mechanism across the top here and inside. Oh, you can see it move. There we go. It moved. It moved. Woo! -hoo. Still alive. It's alive. And the iris and uh, just everything else that goes into, of course, the optical uh, steady shot uh, system is, you know, absolutely amazing technology in itself. So if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and all that sort of jazz. And uh, if you want to discuss it, comments down below, EV blog forum, all that sort of stuff. Thank you to my Patreon uh, supporters. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon link down below. Catch you next time.